Hi Jazzy Greens and welcome back today. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a testimony, my own personal story, uh, how God healed me of breast cancer. And if you're not aware, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And of course, I'm wearing all my gear. I've got my hat that says Survivor. I have my t-shirt and of course I have a ring and some bracelets here. So I'm all ready. So let's get started. Just a few facts, guys. Not a whole lot before I actually share my testimony because it's kind of long, but maybe it won't take that long. And I have it written down, so I will be looking down. Uh, early detection of breast cancer is the best. You want to get your mammograms, ladies. Uh, that I can't stress the importance of that. Get your mammogram. Don't be afraid. And that's exactly what happened to me. I was afraid and I didn't want to go get my mammogram. I just neglected it. So early detection is the key. Always remember what I said. Uh, let me give you a few facts regarding the risk factors actually. Drinking too much alcohol consumption is a big increase for breast cancer. Um, not to say that you can never have a drink, but you want to limit it. And personally, I would say don't drink at all. That's my, my take on that. Um, obesity is another risk factor. That's a real big one. Um, having a very high BMI really increases your chance of getting breast cancer along with other cancers you know uh, there's evidence that shows that women who exercise regularly have at least 10 percent to 25 percent lower risk of getting breast cancer compared to someone who's inactive so getting fit exercise now Who's to say what kind of exercises you should do? My thing is, and what I learned is to get your, your heart rate up. Whether that's walking, you can take a nice walk outside. If you don't want to walk outside, you can always do it at home or go to the gym. The, the goal is to get your heart rate up to a point where it's a little uncomfortable to breathe, but safely you can breathe you know there's all kinds of exercises but i do believe that walking would be less stressful on your joints than like running i used to be a runner i ran two marathons la marathons so i love running i really do i don't run anymore because of other issues with my body i miss it so much but it is stressful on your joints so walking lifting weights um like 10 pounds five pounds to start off uh, anything that increases your heart rate whether you walk on the treadmill you know find something that you can do that's comfortable for you to get your heart rate up and it's good to at least exercise i would say three to five days a week with a minimum of 30 minutes each day also there are some evidence that shows that smoking increases your chances of getting breast cancer as well. So put those cigarettes down, <laughs> those cigars, you know, just leave all that stuff alone. But anyway, I'm gonna share with you my testimony. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Okay, way back on September, in September, 2009, I went in to have a mammogram. I felt relaxed as ever and I didn't think anything about it I really didn't the test went well and I tolerated it very good well <laughs> when I returned home and I barely got my foot in the door and I kid you not my husband says the phone is for you so I answered it it was my doctor's office they told me that they just received my test results and that I needed to schedule an, an appointment ASAP. Now, I had no idea what the deal was. I just didn't know. I didn't think anything of it. You know, I was just like, okay, I thought they were going to 
give me, you know, a good result. Like, oh, we got your test in, good, you're all good. But, you know, that's not what happened. So moving forward, um, like I said, I didn't think much about it. I also had a well woman exam, and that's also important to get that done yearly. And they didn't tell me any specifics, uh, probably because they didn't want to worry me. I did have a chance to speak with my doctor and she told me that she was writing up an authorization for surgery. I said, surgery? I mean, I was like, I couldn't believe she said that word surgery. I had never had surgery before, you know, not as an adult. And I'm like, what do you mean? I mean, I was all upset and just exasperated if that's the word, exasperated. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but anyway, you get the picture. I was like, what do you mean surgery? I didn't want, <clears throat> excuse me, the doctor did not want to explain over the phone. She really didn't. Um, so I made an immediate appointment that day to see her. So I drove myself on down to the city where she was. And at this point, I didn't feel fearful only upset and disappointed because of how, you know, I don't like surgeries. I just don't like, who likes surgeries? And the effects of the anesthesia, because I'm kind of sensitive to that. You know, I do a lot of sleeping and sleeping and sleeping. It's hard to wake up. So, you know, scary can sound, surgery can sound scary. So during the appointment, the doctor shared that the results indicated breast cancer. When I heard the word cancer, I was shocked. I was all upset. I showed no emotion on the outside, but inside of me was screaming, just screaming. I knew God was with me and that I just have to stand and believe and trust God because I am a believer of his word and his healing power. So since I'm a believer, that's what I knew, I knew what to do. I knew that he would bring me through it if I just trust him and just cooperate and do what the doctors tell me to do. After the appointment was over, my mother and I, well, I forgot, rewind back, she came with me. So my mother and I, we stood in the exam room and I believed in praying for the sick, laying on the hands, um, she laid her hands on me and she prayed for me. We both prayed together. After the prayer, I knew it was a done deal. I was just like, I felt confident. I trust God that he would bring me through this ordeal. So I was scheduled to have a biopsy surgery a few weeks later in October. The results, the results were of an evil report, a bad report. It indicated that I had stage one breast cancer. Oh, brother. <laughs> At that time, I started reading a book called Through the Fire, Through the Water by Dr. Betty, B-E-T-T-Y, R. Price. She is the wife of Apostle Frederick Casey Price. He, is a, he was a minister that teaches the word of God in case any of you are curious who he was. This book was encouraging to me and it inspired me. I read it. I did what she, what she did and I confessed certain scriptures over my body for healing that she confessed. I wrote down all the scriptures out of the book and I made them a part of my daily confessions. I get up in the morning with my coffee, if I was drinking coffee at the time, I'm not sure. And I would pray and study the word and I would go over those scriptures and I would confess those scriptures over my body, over my health. I stood on the word of God and I claimed my healing according to Mark 11, 24. I was too uncomfortable with the surgeon and his unprofessionalism that did the biopsy when I had it done. Um, so I decided to have a second opinion. It was just the way he was about it. He really couldn't hear well. And I was like, no, 
I, I you know, he was the first one that told me um, regarding the biopsy, you know, what, what the next step is. And I just wanted to get a second opinion. So that's what I did. Now the second surgeon was a female and I, I felt much better having a female examine me. And this female, this doctor, she confirmed the previous results from the first doctor. She asked me if I was comfortable with her because I needed to have surgery again to remove the tumor and some lymph nodes under my armpits. I said, yes, I feel very comfortable with you, doctor. Uh, it was like peace came over me. I mean, I just felt so at peace. I, I felt like I could trust her. The doctor explained to me everything I needed to know. She said that if there is cancer in the lymph nodes, which under my armpit, then she would need to do a lymph node dissection and the bad side effects that could happen to my arm. So I stood against that in Jesus' name, the bad side effects, and I believed God. I continued to believe him throughout the whole ordeal. My surgery was scheduled in November and I was all prayed up that morning. Once I arrived at the hospital and I got prepped by the nurses, I lay there in my bed and I had such peace, you guys, peace and comfort. I knew people were praying for me because I could actually feel the presence of God. I could feel the prayers. I literally could. I felt peace. I felt like everything is going to be okay. And God's power, his presence was all over me in that room. It was just me and, me and him. And I felt so at ease. I had confidence in God's word that I was healed and delivered. So I sang praises to his name until I went off to sleep. Then I would wake up and sing more praises <laughs> until the nurse wheeled me into surgery. Before the anesthesiologist put me to sleep, I said, and I said this out loud, all is well and this too shall pass. Praise God, the surgery was a success and went well. There was no cancer in the lymph nodes. Praise the Lord. When my mother heard that, she shouted for joy. She was happy. <laughs> the doctor said she removed all of the tumor. She gave me a good prognosis. And she said that I would still need chemotherapy, radiation, and hormonal treatments as well. But God is still good. He was there for me through these treatments and I allowed the Bible to sustain me during difficult and challenging times. When you're given an evil report such as cancer, you really, really, really need to believe God. And a lot of people don't know him like I do. I trust God, I believe in healing. Healing is a covenant right that belongs to us. So that's what I believe, that's what I stood on. I believed the report of the Lord, which says by his stripes, by Jesus stripes, I am healed. You can't allow fear to get into you. You just can't. Faith and fear don't mix. He kept me strong in times when I didn't feel good. Um, this is after the surgery and I'm getting my chemotherapy. I would open my Bible and read and read and confess that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Only to name a few that I would confess. Sometimes I had to isolate myself from my husband and son and lay, you know, go to the bedroom and lay in the bed and just be quiet and still. Um, I would talk to myself. I would encourage myself. And the reason why I had to do that, because um, if you've ever experienced chemotherapy in your body, it can make you feel different. For the most part, I have I handled it well. But some sometimes I just, I can't really describe the feeling of how it made me feel. I just know I just had to lay down. 
because it was not a comfortable feeling and I had to regroup. I had to, like I said, I trusted God and I had to pray and confess those scriptures to help keep, because see, confessing those scriptures is what kept me. It kept me strong and reading God's word every day. I mean, that's what really did. I had to do that. I mean, that was very, very important, especially when you're going through things. I knew that God was with me and he would never leave me nor forsake me. I really had to depend on God's word, like I said, and my faith to get me through some very dark times. Oh boy. In spite that I didn't feel good, I continued to exercise. Yes, I did. I would get on my treadmill. I sure did. And exercise, cook dinner for my family. I would still go to church, even though I felt like I want to be in the bed physically. I was really determined to act strong, to walk by faith and not by how I felt. To sum it all up, guys, I just give thanks to my healer, Jesus. I thank God for healing and delivering me. He deserves all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Now, I just wanted to share these two pictures with you guys, um, just to give you an idea of what I weighed um, before I got diagnosed with breast cancer. This first picture here, um, Aaron was a little baby then, and that's when I started to bloom and bloom and bloom. But the next one, the green one, that was my heaviest weight that I had ever weighed in my entire life. I have blossomed <laughs> to a 320 pound person. And lastly, here is a picture of my absolute best friend for so many years. Um, I'm sad to say that she had died from breast cancer. Uh, she had terminal breast cancer. So um, I just wanted to share this picture with you and let you know that uh, this was my best friend and I miss her so much. When you have a lot of weight on you, it does and it can. I'll put it like that. It can increase your chances of anything, really. Not just breast cancer but any type of ailment and diseases you know we put our lives in jeopardy by having extra pounds because it's not good for the heart uh, the internal organs our feet it's not good for our blood pressure our heart and you name it if you guys would like me to share some of the healing scriptures that I would confess daily you know I will I will just go ahead and put them in the description box so uh, you can take a look at that and, you know, add that to your confessions if you're into that. But anyway, that is my testimony. Um, I hope that it showed some encouragement to you. I hope that it was motivating to you. Um, hopefully you would never be diagnosed with breast cancer, but that is my story. So I just hope that um, you can take something from it. Um, you have to be strong. You have to be strong. What did I learn from this? Uh, I learned that you cannot take your health for granted. You just can't. You've got to get those mammograms and all the other different screening tests that we ladies have to go through every year. Don't be afraid, ladies. Just go ahead and do it. It's better to do it and be afraid than to be given an evil report and then you're really afraid you know just go ahead so i'm just trying to encourage each and every one of you to go ahead and get your tests done get your mammogram get your well woman exam everything get everything that you know to do if you don't know what types of tests that are available that you need to get done ask your doctor so anyway i hope that was good for you i hope you guys like this uh, please leave me comments down below. Let me know what you think of this testimony. And I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. So come on, guys. Get your mammograms. Get those tests done. And don't be afraid, okay? So I love you guys. I'll see you later. And thank you so much for tuning in. You guys have a blessed day. Bye.